Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Uh, the last, the previous discussion actually set the perfect, perfect scene for my presentation because I'm actually going to talk about the experimentation and how to do it. Um, so I'm going to tell you about Sturens's digitalization approach and what digitalization means for us in Sturens. Uh, before we go into that, I'm going to tell you a few words about Sturens in general. So we are a renewable materials company, uh, which means basically that we produce different wood and bio-based materials. We have five different business divisions where we uh, aim this, this uh, vision um, by producing different kind of uh, solutions. So we have biomaterials where we produce, for example, chemical pulp. Not only that, but also other types of innovative bio-based materials. Uh, our consumer board division produces different kind of paper board materials for end user purposes. So actually every third out of each uh, paper board liquid packaging in the world is made out of Sturanzos materials. We have our packaging solutions division, which produces different kind of corrugated and other type of packaging materials. So in the era of uh, online retail, this is kind of big thing. I mean, we need to make sure that the goods are properly packaged, uh, it looks nice, and, and they will reach the customers in a perfect shape. Um, and then we have our wood products division. So different kind of wood, uh, wood, wooden elements for uh, construction and building for housing industry. So for example, these huge uh, wooden elements that enables us to, to build uh, multi-story wooden buildings. Quite cool. Uh, and the paper division where we have a huge variety of different uh, paper products for different use cases. And what's in common for all of these five divisions? It's actually our raw material, the trees. Um, so that is, that is quite cool. I mean, those amazing machines that turn carbon dioxide into, in, into oxygen. And we want to make sure uh, that the forests are doing well. So for that reason, I actually want to provide you with the first uh, uh, taste a bit of our digitalization initiatives on how we make sure that the forests are in a good shape. So let's take a look at the short video. Drone forest inventory means that we are flying over the forest and we are taking basically images and with the help of different sensors, information about forest. And then we are doing the analysis. Based on that, we can get uh, information about single tree level. So we basically know every, every tree locations and parameters for trees. And that helps us to, to do operations more efficient and provide us better customer value for, the, for our forest owners. Quite cool. So our vision is that everything that's made of fossil-based materials today can be made out of tree tomorrow. We are working uh, in, in uh, 30 different countries and it's 26,000 employees in total. Our transformation journey so far looks already quite nice. I mean, if you look 13 years back, um, our business, uh, our company was a little bit different. It was uh, heavily relying on the paper. But nowadays, 13 years later, it's actually much ni more nicely balanced between these different areas, which enables us to be innovative on a nice variety of different, uh, different areas of renewable materials. In addition to that, we have actually a target that in long term, 15% uh, of our sales is coming from new products and services. And this is something that digitalization also plays a big role. So when, when I say digitalization uh, in students, it means that we are talking about different uh, new technologies. I mean, it could be machine learning, AI, IoT, uh, 
whatever, you name it. Something new technology that is relevant to us, uh, yet not uh, so um, widely used. So that's basically what we mean. So how do we then achieve these targets? Uh, so Sturanzo is actually quite an old company. We, are, uh, we have roots over 700 years back. So someone could say that it sets a company to be rather traditional. I mean, it could be so. Uh, so that's why I claim that uh, when a company like that uh, starts to uh, run uh, and, and uh, forward its uh, digital transformation, the technology is actually the easy part. So it's actually the, the culture that is the biggest barrier, getting there. And after that comes uh, the lack of understanding of digital trends, lack of talent of digital or IT infrastructure, but it's the culture that we really need to focus on. And how we have uh, decided to do that is through experimentation. So what does that actually mean? I mean, kids are good at experimenting. Imagine they have something that they want to achieve, they will just do it, and they will learn from it. They don't, they don't start to make heavy studies, feasibility studies, several year long plans how to achieve their goal. They will just do it. It will work or not, but they will learn from it. So when we work with new technologies, there is so much uncertainty that if we start to make these this long-term plans and, and heavy studies, that's where it will go wrong. So that's why we have decided to do first, analyze then. I mean, it's quite fun. And it should be easy, even kids can do it. So, <laughs> um, Then, how in practice we run this forward? Uh, this is our so-called digitalization funnel. So this is the way that we run the new ideas forward. And the basic idea is that anyone in the company Anyone out of those 26,000 people can actually apply with their idea. So we engage the whole company to our experimentation. We will help them to form that into a concept. That can be easily proven. Uh, I mean, it could be a technical uh, experiment. It could be on the, on the uh, way of working, like how the, how the company, how the organization is able to adapt the, the new technology, whatever. We do the experiment and we learn from it. And the successful ones will move to the piloting phase. And that's that we call so-called verification of value phase. And if, this, if the idea still works, we move to the implementation and, and further rollout. And in each of these phases, we are actually learning. And even more importantly, we are sharing the learnings. So we are doing, for example, uh, company-wide webinars. We are making videos, whatever, that will ensure that, that when we learn something, we will share it with the whole company. And what is actually the beauty of it is that, especially when we talk about the experimentation phase, it's, it's really hard to, really, uh, to actually fail. This sets us very nicely to, to the success. And when I say fail uh, or success, when I, when I talk about success, I'm actually meaning that even though we prove something not to work, it is a successful proof of concept or pilot. I mean, it's a success that, that, you, that you are able to prove it, prove something, it works, it doesn't work, and you will learn from it. So, actually, the only way to really fail is to, to, to fail and learn nothing. So, and that never happens. We always learn when we try out things. So it's quite cool. Uh, and this is where we also tie our funding structures to. So we have a 10 million euro annual allocation for this. We, are call we have been running this for three years now, our so-called digitalization funnel or digitalization fund. And uh, we have, so far we have been collected uh, 250 ideas and funded 130 of them. So there is quite nice volume behind this. Um, currently we have 57 projects ongoing. 
73 of them have been finished. We have been doing quite many webinars so far. Um, and there are quite many, many people listening in throughout the company. So I would say that this our digitalization fund is something that has been like accelerating our digital transformation quite nicely. You must be curious on, on some practical examples where this has led us to. So now I'm going to provide those to you. I have six examples here, all in different phases of our funnel. Let's, try the, let's start with the first one. Uh, it, uh, it is an example or a case testing out how we can utilize augmented reality uh, with ma for maintenance purposes. So basically you, you will see certain information about the machines and, and uh, the machine conditions, even process conditions in an augmented reality view when you point the, the mobile phone to the machine. The next one is so-called gamification model. Uh, developed uh, actually very uh, very uh, close by here in Skutjar. And the idea is, uh, is to uh, create this like a 3D model of, of the meal environment uh, and, and uh, visualize uh, the, the employee tasks in, in, in that environment and in a more fun way to engage the employees into the task in, in, a, in a completely new way, utilize gamification. Then we have a few cases that have passed the verification of value phase. The, the next one is so-called virtual forest application up and running in Finland. So it is available for uh, forest owners in Finland. So for example, if they are living uh, far away from their forest, they can actually log in, go to their virtual forest. It is all there, utilizing the, the available data. Uh, so you can just go there, see how your forest looks like, and you can test what if I do these har harvesting, harvesting actions in my forest, how will, will it look like? And how will it look like after five years or after ten years? And it also su suggested uh, the forest owners certain forest activities, like maybe you should consider some harvesting actions, for example. So, quite nice. Uh, the next one is uh, in an application where we utilize drones to collect the data and measure how much wood and, and chips we have on the, on the mill sites and other like, uh, locations that we have. So it is up and running in, in over 20 locations. So drone is flying over the, the so-called terminal area of the mill and, and uh, taking pictures and analyzing how many cubic meters we have wood there. So no more people walking. Um, walking there on the field, uh, which is also a, a safety risk. So, um, so it's more safe and more accurate and fast way to collect the information and collect the data. The next one is so-called anti-collision solution for, for our warehouse operations. So there is also a safety risk. There, uh, there has been a safety risk that, that when people and, and forklifts are, are moving in the same areas, so this solution is, uh, is actually warning people when and the forklifts if they are approaching each other and, and, uh, and giving, giving a signal and preventing, preventing the collisions between, between pedestrians and, and forklift driver, forklifts. Also rolled out uh, for several locations already. already. Uh, the one on the furthermost right is robotic process automation, something ha that uh, is there in our normal IT service portfolio already, but it has gone through the whole funnel. So we have we started with the proof of concept some three years ago, and now it is there. So we have been robotizing over 60 processes around our, our different operations, like for example in the finance area. So, and these are just some examples. So we are not doing this alone. Um, on top of colla uh, collaborating with several uh, bigger companies, we are also collaborating a lot with startups. So, so far we have been screening over 600 startups and we have established uh, deeper collaboration with 16 of them. 
uh, we have two different programs where we systematically do the startup collaboration. So the first one is Students Accelerator is more like a leadership development program um, where we also uh, collaborate with startups, learn from them and, and co-develop solutions with them. And the next one is our Combined Foundry, which is a collaboration between several different companies, uh, which also enables us to run these campaigns and, and, uh, and uh, collaborate with startups. So another enabler, besides, uh, besides um, uh, engaging all the employees in the company, is the top management commitment. And our digitalization fund it's itself is quite good proof that, that it is in place. On top of that, I have some nice pictures here. There is our CEO and uh, the chairman of board, all on board, for example. So that's quite good and super important. So as a recap, Sturans's digitalization approach, uh, our goal is to gain competitive advantage by making full use of uh, digitalization, uh, both optimizing current business and enable, enabling new business models. Whatever we do falls under these different, so-called so different uh, themes. So three different themes, which are customer engagement, industrial digitalization, and smart back office. So whatever we do is under these themes. And the enablers, innovation culture, which I've been talking about uh, a lot, uh, the operating model, so for example, the, the funding process, um, and, um, and technology access. So we have uh, established our, our platforms, data platforms, to make sure that we have the data available when we need it, and we are, uh, we are handling it in a systematic way. And another example of uh, fostering the, the innovation culture and, and uh, as an enabler is that we have actually a company-wide uh, digital learning academy, academy, which enables every one of those 26,000 uh, uh, employees to learn the basics, for example, from AI or IoT, you name it. Uh, we have our so-called digitalization team, where I'm also coming from. It is headed by our CDO, uh, Chief Digital Officer. And um, this is a team about 20 plus people. And you can, the, the previous teams that I presented, uh, you can also find here as our so-called digitalization streams. So these streams are heavily collaborating between all, different, all these different divisions. So whatever we do, we ensure that there is good cross-divisional company-wide uh, commitment. And all what we do is very much business-driven. So we, as the digitalization team, don't start any project by ourselves, but it all comes from the business. Um, so this is how we, we run it. And uh, yet bringing it back to the concrete level, so, for example, the video you saw in the very beginning of the, of the uh, utilizing drones in the forests. So, how would that and how did that case go? Was that someone had an idea, they applied it to the digitalization fund, which we keep open twice a year. They got the funding and that's how it started. That easy it is. So, engaging anyone with an idea in the, in the company. And we actually just closed our previous round, so we have yet uh, the new 40 plus uh, exciting ideas to take, uh, take forward. So let's see where this takes us. As one more example, I want to see, I want to show you one one video showcasing a few things that we have this experimentation has taken us to. A 
proud nominee of the best implementation of industrial IoT on the shop floor. Stura Enso. We have experts all around the world. By utilizing modern technology, we can solve problems and prevent failures via remote assistance. By gathering the world's leading partners around us, Stura Enso is set out to be the pacemaker of IoT and 5G technology in the renewable materials industry. As the first company in our industry, we have implemented 5G technology to enable augmented reality and high-density 360-degree camera solutions to help us to utilize real-time information in mill maintenance. With the augmented reality, we can see deeper than just the surface of a machine. Failures can be prevented more effectively with all the information being available. In case of a fault, it can be located easily and solved with the help of remote expertise. In addition, the 5G network is enabling us to monitor certain areas of the mill in real time by using 360-degree cameras. All necessary information is easily and visually at the disposal of experts, irrespective of geographical distance. When something unexpected happens, the 360-degree cameras gives us a virtual view with valuable information of the event. And this information can be reached in real time by all our experts. At Stura Enso, we see that all this is just the beginning. 5G technology will open doors to the unlimited applications that need faster and more powerful wireless network connection. For the future operations, we are piloting autonomous vehicles and machines which can be controlled remotely because of the low latency of 5G. At Stura Enso, it will increase efficiency and flexibility as well as yield higher availability in production. Stura Enso, a digital forerunner for a renewable future. So with that, I would like to thank you for listening.